I did see one question about, I did hear one question from Adam Jacoby Hawkeye Beacon regarding quarterback situation. And according to Kirk, um, his mind is open. He keeps, he's keeping his mind open, which we've heard that line year after year after year, whenever he's uh, questioned about his quarterback decisions. He, I think he's kind of always fell back on that. Well, we'll keep continue to keep an open mind on things. So that statement that comment from Kirk means absolutely nothing as it relates to any hope that maybe you give Brendan Sullivan a chance. And like, I stand by what I said during the post game and what coach Patterson said during the post game show Saturday, I'm not advocating for Cade McNamara to be benched, but from the moment of that, we start hearing about Brendan Sullivan's emergence during fall camp, which was in line with what we knew that he did at Northwestern at a big 10 program with subpar wide receiver talent and, you know, and whatnot and, and a difficult situation there with the, the Pat Fitzgerald situation and a, a di- offense that was changing from the moment that all transpired. I said, I want to see both those guys week one. And I made the stupid, here's where I was stupid. Here's where I was stupid. I was stupid by thinking that Iowa would actually play two quarterbacks get, and give both guys meaningful snaps week one. I don't know how, what planet was I living on. All right. What, what dumb, uh, mental headed planet was I living on. All right. Ill conceived planet was I living on that. The fact that I thought I would actually play both quarterbacks. So nothing that Kirk said today makes me think they're going to do that. If they're, if they were going to do that and give Brendan an opportunity to audition, it would be this Saturday against Troy, but I have no reason on this green and blue earth Mark to think that Kirk will play both guys and give them meaningful snaps. Not, no indication, no indicator. So what you're likely to have happen is the same thing that we saw in 2022 when Spencer Petras took all the snaps in a 27-0 win against Nevada that ended at 3 a.m. or a 33-0 lead against Illinois State a week ago, week and a half ago, in which Brennan Sullivan got snaps at the very end of the game and handed the ball off three times. There's no reason for me to think that will change and my guess is that Cade will continue to get all the snaps. And here's what will likely happen. My guess is Cade will perform well Saturday. That's my guess. If he doesn't, major alarms, right? Sound the alarms. But what we saw Saturday should concern people. And I know Kirk made comments after the after the game about how, you know, Cade's still trying to he even use the term, trying to work his way back in the game shape. And, and you know, it's a new offense, yada, yada, yada. As, as we said Saturday, and I'll stand by it, they need to play the best guy now. And I know Kirk must believe that Kate is the best guy, and he may be. But with as close as it was during fall camp, and folks, it was close, whether they were getting equal snaps against equal competition, we can discuss that a different day and debate that. It was close, closer than any other quarterback competition we've seen in recent years, even in spite of the fact that Iowa's had subpar starting quarterback play in Deacon Hill, Spencer Petras, and a hobbled Cade McNamara for the first month of the season last year. We don't know what Brendan Sullivan would do with the guys out there. We do know this. We do know that Brendan Sullivan has incredible chemistry with the number one receiver on the depth chart, that is Jacob Gill, because they played together at Northwestern. They're roommates today. They're best friends. We do know that. We do know that Brendan Sullivan is more mobile than Cade. We do know Brendan Sullivan is not coming off two major knee injuries. We do know those things, but what we don't know is how he would play in a game situation in an Iowa jersey right now. And the the biggest fear Iowa fans should have, and really it's a two part fear: a you don't you, you continue to get subpar uh, and incomplete, inconsistent play from Cade during meaningful games. I mean, you know we, we've seen two games where it's been a tale of two halves, and in some cases a tale of four quarters with Cade through two games. All right, he may get he may figure that out. But that's the fear that the inconsistencies with quarterback play continues. And then the other part of this is what happens if he gets hurt? And then you're throwing Brennan Sullivan into an unfair situation, a situation that I I would guess he can handle, but is unfair to him because he, in my opinion, based on what I was told and what, what information that I was given, he earned the opportunity to, at a minimum, get meaningful snaps against an FCS and a a G5 opponent in the non-conference. And I don't think he's going to get that.
And how many of those points that you just covered, which was seven or eight points, did we talk about during August camp when it became obvious that this was a serious quarterback competition and that Brendan Sullivan was pushing for the job? We said all those things. I said all those things, whether you led with the point and I confirmed it and, and agreed or vice versa. I figured, OK, the last time Kate McNamara proved to be a successful Big Ten quarterback and effective quarterback was way back in 2021. Since then, he's been injured and he was ineffective in three and a half games for Iowa last year. Brendan Sullivan's a guy that completed 69% of his passes over the course of 200 pass attempts as a Big Ten quarterback, has the camaraderie and the chemistry with Jacob Gill, as you just mentioned, who has proven to be Iowa's best complete receiver. And if the competition was that close, that late in camp, why don't you play both guys and see who is the better when the bullets are flying and they didn't do that. And your last point was a point that I know that we covered a month ago before it was ever a factor. What if Brendan Sullivan is thrown into action without having played with these guys during game competition when you had ample opportunity to get him involved and let him go through game reps? But let's say McNamara gets hurt, then it's Brendan Sullivan. If I'm running the show, and maybe Iowa fans don't fully acknowledge or are able to grasp what a good quarterback performance looks like because it's been forever since they've seen one from week to week. Nate Stanley would be the last guy that delivered good quarterback. You know, he was inconsistent, sure. He had never had a 60% completion year. No, never. he did not. But he could sling it. Uh, if you look around college football, if you're used to just watching Iowa play, you may not recognize a bad quarterback performance, but we got another one from Cade McNamara on Saturday. That was not a good quarterback performance that I don't know if it was the play call or his decision, but the interception that he threw, that was just a bad dumb decision. play throwing bad the decision. ball all the way across the field yep. into coverage, bad decision, bad throw. And uh, this here, here's the deal, whether you like Cade or not, he has been underthrowing everything for two straight weeks now. Caleb and Brown beat his man and beat the entire secondary. For there's what another one. Probably a touchdown. There's another one. Gary Danielson brought it up. That might have been a touchdown if he puts that ball on the money. Now, Don brought up how Cade's not seeing off his DBs, right? So, you know, his eyes that allowed that safety to come over the top to make that play. But again, it was underthrown. So he, he's got it. So even go back to Illinois State the touchdown to Vanderzee, whereas Vanderzee snatched it, right? He went up and grabbed it. That ball was horrendously underthrown, and he was falling down. Now, I thought his footwork was better Saturday, but he underthrew Lachey in week one that would have been a touchdown. He underthrew Vanderzee on the touchdown that happened because of Vanderzee's ability to go up and get it against an FCS opponent. But we continue to see that trend Saturday. We're used to seeing Iowa quarterbacks overthrown. Right, these guys that have cannons for arms like Deacon Hill, Spencer Petrus, Nate Stanley. So th there's got to be a level of concern there, and you know the only thing that that you can really rest your hope on it as it relates to quarterback play and Cade is you do have a guy in Tim Lester who understands how to coach quarterbacks, and and I think you know like I say footwork was better week two from Cade. He's still under throwing guys. Tim will work with those guys as a former quarterback, as a play caller, better than Brian Ferentz ever was able to and was equipped to when he was in the same position. So that's the good news. And just because they are playing Cade McNamara, doesn't mean that Tim Lester wouldn't want to play Brennan Sullivan. That decision ultimately, just like the two point decision and all that, that's coming down to the head coach. I mean, he's ultimately, you know, Tim may give his input and say, Kirk, I think we should play Brennan Sullivan. But Mark, if Kirk feels strongly about playing one of the, the other, he's the head coach. Those are big decisions. Like who is playing at quarterback are big decisions. And he, he brought up today during his press conference how, you know, we rotate guys at other positions. It's harder to do that at quarterback. Yeah, but, yeah, but, right? Like we've seen Purdue, I, I bring up 2021, Jeff Brom threw out three quarterbacks against Iowa in Kinnick Stadium, and they all looked great because they all had individual jobs. They had packages set up. It can be done. Jeff Brom is an excellent offensive mind. So that's one huge difference between he and Kirk Ferentz. But they have Tim Lester. And I have no doubt that Tim can could figure out a way to utilize both guys' skill sets and maybe even Marco Linez's skill set. 
So, you know, I, I know people, people have become very reactionary over the last few days, fire Kirk, retire Kirk. Yeah. I, I'm not there. I, I'm not, I'm not, that's not me. I, I I've said before, if Kirk retired tomorrow, I would be sad in a way, but I'd be excited for the future. To me, you, you got to have balance with this, but it's also not the time to, to go to those extreme measures. What I believe it is the time to do, if you're someone who analyzes the game and claims to be some form of, of media, be critical, be respectful, but be critical. And all of these things we've talked about today, including quarterback controversy, is controversy. It's not just calling for the next guy every year. They have had bad quarterback play every single year since 2020. They have. So it's not unfair to say maybe there's – a lapse in evaluation here. And especially when you have a guy as proven as Brennan Sullivan was at the Big Ten level. Not many programs at this level have such a proven backup. That's what's sad about the situation. Iowa struggling at quarterback. They actually finally have a proven backup, and I don't know that they're going to use him. I don't know that anyone in the Big Ten has that level of back. Now, Ohio State's got a room, but they're all inexperienced. They don't have that inexperienced backup. Yeah. Well, uh, Northwestern does have a couple of guys that have played a lot. Yeah. I think. But, but yeah, I, I agree. I, I, I mean, um, so it, it's incredible. I, I, I don't know if we'll learn anything against Troy. I think the only thing that you could look for and hope for is that you see Brennan Sullivan Saturday. Even if Cade's playing well, that has nothing to do with what I wanted to see both of them week one without knowing how Cade would play. But we people overreacted to Cade's performance week one. It just, they did. His numbers were good in the second half. They were porous in the first, but even the numbers in the second half were, uh, you know, what's the word? I'm, I'm blown up by some other factors like having a receiver in, in Reese Vanderzee and other receivers who, even though Cade put the ball in difficult positions, held on, did not, you know, they, nobody dropped passes with exception of maybe Kamari Moulton once or twice. The receivers have not really had problems with drops this year. 